Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to No Man's Land with Seasons. My first year playing on this map. Wait, that didn't sound right. This is a brand new map, and this is the first year of this single save game for this No Man's Land map. I guess that's kind of hard to for me to say right now. I'm not sure why. But check it out. I wanted to talk about this windmill and Seasons and what happened. It snowed two days ago. I got two millimeters of snow. And the windmill stopped turning. And my income per hour for the windmill also stopped, which is to be expected. So then I fast forward it, it because there's really not much to do in the winter. And there's a lot of fast forwarding. When you're first starting out in your first year, in the wintertime, you know, there's not much to do except for logging, but I've already, I've logged myself out for right now. I've already chopped down about 90 trees. So I gotta wait until I get the itch again to start logging, which I will be because I just bought plot 37 adjacent to 36 there. A lot of trees over there. Lots and lots of trees, so that'll be for a future video. But when it snowed, the windmill stopped turning. I thought that was awesome. At first I was scared, so I saved my game, logged out, closed the application, restarted the application farming simulator, reloaded my save game, came back into the instance that I was in, and the windmill blades were still not turning. I thought, oh great, now it's broken, it's glitched. But then I thought, wait a minute, it snowed, and then it stopped. So that would mean that they probably iced over. weren't turning so I didn't get any income per hour I thought that was cool and I thought I would like to share that with everybody I thought that was really cool so not only does Sun affect your solar panels as to be exact e expected and I have it facing south because on all maps north is always up that's north and the sun rises in the east, that way, sets in the west, that way, and on the hardest difficulty, that matters. I wonder if I would get more income per hour if I would chop some more of these trees down to kind of get a little bit more sun. Like this one over here is a tall one. This one, this, this one definitely needs to come down now. So the wind affects the windmill, which affects your hourly income. I have noticed that the faster the wind speed is, the more income per hour you get with the windmill. Very cool. Very cool indeed. So that 
that should be a nice little extra sunlight. Maybe I get more income per hour late in the day. Who knows? Now, it varies from day to day, my property income. It's all based, based on wind, speed, and how much sun on those two, just those two items give me property income. But this solar panel was a $150,000 investment. It's the biggest one I, I have for that mod. There's a lot of solar panel mods, but that's just one of them that I placed down. If you have one on your map, it may be different. So winter's kind of cool. I mean, I could be logging, but I said I'm all logging out. I don't feel like doing it. So I've just been messing around, playing in the snow, seeing if I can see if seeing if I can flip my tractor. It's kind of hard to do. This this tractor is very very sturdy and. So I'd have to get a snow plow, maybe, and plow all this out if I was going to place it here. But it's actually going to go right around where the tractor is. Plenty of room. That's what I like about No Man's Land. It gives you lots of land to work with to create your own little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Utopia, because eventually I'm going to have a city with different types of city buildings, different types of cell points. I'm going to be the mayor of my own town on this map. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I just thought I'd just discuss some things today. By the way, that one won't be the bunker I'll be buying. I'll be buying, I think this triple one here, here for five five slots. And the way you're, the reason it's triple, because I can put my silage in one bunker and not have to worry about it. You know, not having room for the next time I make silage, which is in the fall. In seasons, you make silage in the middle of the spring. You make hay in the middle of summer and you make silage again 
in the middle of fall. So that's only twice a year, so I'll have plenty of room, plenty of time to clear one out to make room for the next harvest. I think maybe right up against this rock face. That's a good spot for it. Gives me plenty of room. Wow, I like that. It's a huge map. No Man's Land is a nice huge map and it does not take much room to fill your hard drive. That's what's nice about it too. It only took up 4% of the room for my total space available for my console, PlayStation 4. That's awesome. How deep, well detailed this map is, how much there is to do, how many trees are on there, everything about this map is awesome and even the realism there's certain aspects of this map that are not on other maps which are obviously because the map maker made it that way and i'm talking like physics realism you name it i'm just i'm discovering some things that i didn't even realize were capable like for example when that windmill those windmill blades got frozen over by the fresh fallen snow at first like i said i thought it was glitched but it wasn't. It was just a natural effect for a farming simulator game that you would expect to happen. That the windmill blades would just be frozen where they couldn't turn and then they would have to wait for the sun to come up the next day and maybe break that ice in the windmill and the wind was just right and it finally broke free and, and that's exactly what happened. You know, every once in a while a game comes along that just knocks it out of the park and hits a Farming Simulator 19, or I should say probably the entire Farming Simulator series, is the, one of those games. One of those games that you can never put down. One of those games that you never get bored playing. I've never had a game like hap since uh, hap happened to me like this since uh, about 2005. I won't say the name of the game because that's it's, it's not a Farming Simulator game. And that, I don't want to make this video about that but I wanted to give it as an example so that was 15 years ago last that I saw a game that I never got bored of and then I didn't move on to a different game after playing it maybe let's say six weeks to two months that's about the normal time a person will play a game and then get bored of it and move on to another game that's natural but Farming Simulator 19 is just one of those games that comes along about every 15 20 years that is so immersive, so incredible, and there's so much to do. I've been playing this game now f for, I'm gonna say seven months, and I've barely scratched the surface of the vehicle types that I can buy. The different things that you can purchase, the different animal types, the different, all of those different types of mods, the different breeds of animals, different ways of doing things that other people have discovered, and then they share on the YouTube forum like this Just driving around in the snow nothing else nothing else much to do in the winter time right now cuz i don't have any animals yet i don't feel like logging i've already worked pretty hard at making a five fields you've seen my other videos and i just look at this i just purchased a sprayer that's more efficient for spreading herbicide i'm not using this for liquid her liquid fertilizer this is strictly for herbicide and it's very more much more efficient than this lizard rubicon the lizard rubicon if you if you use this to herbicide an entire field spending way too much money because of these the spread rate is very is the word I'm looking for it sprays a lot more than you think it would it's not very efficient at all that's just for uh, late in the or I should say early in the summer when the crops are a little bit too high and driving a tractor into the crops would just ruin the crops so I use this I'm not going to turn it on by the way because it's very loud or actually I will 
Turn your speakers down just for a second. This is really good. This is annoying, especially if, if you have ear, ear headphones on right now and you're watching this video. Turn the speaker down volume or, or, or just kind of hold them away from your ear. Take them off and hold them away from your ear as far as you can. Because when I turn this on, you're going to be asking yourself, is this how they sound in real life? Yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. But, but when, it, when it comes to a, a, a game, it can be kind of annoying. But the cool part is, is it, it's still real life. And, that, and that was, that's what makes it okay. But here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> You're going to drive that around? But if you got your volume down low, by the way, the collisions on this are way too fat. There's invisible collisions here. But it is a nice mod. I do like it. For my style of play, there are a few people that play with seasons that would need this. But the crops are a little bit too high. Driving a tractor over it would ruin the crops. You're thinking to yourself, how do I get rid of these weeds? Well, this is where this comes into play. And with Seasons, it's just, it's not like the normal version of this game. Seasons is the advanced version. Believe it or not, there are only spot weeds. Like here, here we go, here's an example. See this right here? These are dead weeds, but they only come up in spots. Which would make reason why that makes this perfect for just little spot weeds. Like there might be a spot of weeds over here, a little bit of bunch of weeds, let's say, over here. This is a good example, by the way. I didn't really plan this, but it's working out well because this field doesn't have any crop in it. So I, I, I just let the weeds grow. I'm waiting for soybeans to be planted here in the spring, uh, let's see, late spring next year when the soil temperature will be 50 degrees. And the nitrogen is also perfect for here. That's, that's why there's no crops here. But for the purposes of this drone, it's a perfect example of how weeds work in seasons. Now I know on the regular version, they call it Seasons Light, or they just say regular version of the game that has nothing to do with Seasons. I think the weeds cover the entire field, if I'm not mistaken. Like the entire field just gets covered with little tiny little weeds and your object, your objective is to go in there and kill them all. If that's how I remember playing it, because I have played the regular version of this game and, and pretty much after about the first month of playing this, as soon as I got the Seasons, it, I, I never looked back. The Seasons version. Now I know the regular version, there's just sun, and it's always sunny, and every day is... Every day is, like, warm. So I remember how it works. But I'm not too sure if it's been updated or not, but I think weeds cover the entire field if I'm... Now here we go. Like, see, here's a little spot bunch of spot weeds that I did actually spray because there's canola growing here and I used this drone with herbicide in it to kill those weeds and then I came over here and it started to I noticed it started to get really expensive and then I noticed you know what it's, the, it's because of the flow rate of this drone it really goes through a lot of it very fast so you got to be careful and you got to think to yourself okay just using a little bit in a small area that's justified because one tank full of this is almost like 900 bucks just to fill that little tiny tank whereas the other one by the way let's just let's just turn this off kind of tired of hearing that aren't you but that's how they sound in real life ridiculous right of course it's gonna be really really high up in the air so you're not gonna hear it but this tank here of course it's, it was it's a lot more expensive but that cost to, to fill this tank up is about two thousand two hundred and twelve dollars but the flow rate the spread rate I can spray all my fields with what I've got here and still have some left over Whereas this device here, I'm lucky if I can do half of this field. So you can you can imagine how this one over here is a lot more efficient. 
And I just purchased that uh, a couple days ago here in the wintertime. That's a nice uh, mod. Let me show you which one it is. Well, here's my tractor, the one I said that's very awesome. Only 10 slots. This one, of course, is, is 41 slots, but there's a reason for that. That's for another video. Here's the Rubicon, one slot. Can't beat that. And it'll also do fertilizing. But like I said, that's just way too expensive. Herbicide is the only one I would use this for. Here it is, the Mega 2200. Brand new. 10 miles per hour, that's the updated one. That's what you get with the mod in the mod hub it's the updated one it's the fastest one I think all the rest are seven miles per hour but that one I like it because it's 10 miles per hour that's very efficient if you want to go on other maps not no man's land but other maps that have contract jobs you're going to get them done faster and plus you're going to use less of your spray for your fertilizer for contract fertilizing jobs that's really nice because I believe the other ones only go up to about 7 miles per hour. That's a huge, huge increase from 7 to 10. Now, I have four buckets. That's going to be used. I bought, bought them ahead of time. That will be used for keeping my cows clean and my pigs and my chickens. And I'll show you how I use them. It, it makes cleaning much more less tedious but there's a trick to it that'll be for another video so the sawmill I even had to purchase myself everything on no man's land is just like it is it's just bare land untouched land it's the best map in the game in my opinion now if you're tired of doing contracts I definitely recommend no man's land if you just want to get away from everything get away from the hustle and bustle of the traffic everything and just create your own vision of what you want to create and there's so much room it's a huge map everybody have a great day